Hello and welcome back to another Battletech guide. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at the question what is the potential strongest lance in the entire game? I read those questions over and over across many reddit threads and the answers are quite diverse so we're going to investigate what is really the strongest lance and I'll give you a bit of gameplay as well. Before we jump into the topic I would put a shameless plug in here myself my channel features quite a bit of strategy games, XCOM, Battletech and a few others. If you enjoy set content and if you enjoy guides, feel free to check it out. I encourage you to give it a look if anything sparks your interest. So with that out of the way, let's move to the question what really is the strongest lance in Battletech. By reading through quite a few forum threads as I was researching it, I've seen everything across the board and varying opinions although there is an objectively correct answer to the question and i'll come to that in a second i've seen quotes about three atlases and a highlander massive ac20 spams yet another train of thought was use lrms uh, king crabs and a scout maybe a highland brawler on top of it so there were varying combinations of that there was a com typical combination of a king crab, a bit of an atlas and a highlander and something else. And finally, there was a, a combination of a cyclops for the initiative boost and then basically king crab, atlas and highlander or two hand highlanders and a king crab. And whilst that is all fun and uh, game uh, and good, the game itself offers a bit more and I will show you today an absolutely killer lance down to the very details so first part of the video will be going through the builds and why i've chosen what i've chosen and then we're going to take a look at some footage so the absolute strongest lance in the game is comprised of three atlas two star league max and one single annihilator that can theoretically also be exchanged with a king crab but the annihilator tends to deal better in that specific setup before I am disclosing what we're doing in detail, I want to discuss shortly how I determine strengths as a lance so that we are talking about the same uh, things and compare apple to apple. When I talk about strengths of a lance, it basically has five attributes. Number one, the ability to deal with multiple enemies at the same time. An absolutely top lance will be able to deal with eight to 12 enemies, so two to three enemy lances of equal strength and still come out ahead without losing major material. Second aspect, the ability to not run out of steam. And what I mean with that is missions in the endgame, five school missions can have up to 20 enemies. So five lances is the maximum that you can encounter. And you need to have an ability to go through 20 enemies with your lance and still have steam left over afterwards. Thirdly, an absolute top lance need to be able to function in any biome. There is no excuse not to work with 60% heat reduction in or 60% heat efficiency in a lunar biome. Number four, the lands need to be able to deal with any sort of shenanigans. And I would say that is heat damage generation of the enemy, stability damage where they are just trying to burst you down or simply physical damage overload, whether that is breaching shots and LRM spam, or whether that is just simple brawling and running into you. And number five, the lance need to be able to engage at different uh, ranges. So quite a few uh, valuation criteria, so to speak, but a really top lance needs to excel at all of these. And when I was looking deeper into the lances, there was typically either one or two of these uh, categories where the lance was falling down, and maybe even three of them in many cases. And I don't blame the players at the first playthrough. If you are not really deep into the game, you might already think that you have found uh, the optimum. I did nearly 100, 150 hours of uh, fine tuning before I came to this lance. So I want to share with you what my experience is of actually going the extra mile, building the very strongest lance. Let's talk about the meta in the game, which is essentially what you should or should not do. And this is how I approached the lance building as well. 
Number one, heat damage is typically inferior to other strategies. Heat damage has low ammunition and heat banks counter it. Keep that in mind so you will not see that in the lance. Number two, stability damage, although others might disagree with that, is rather a niche and can be countered too easy. What I mean with that is bracing removes it, vigilance removes it, gyros in general remove it, sure footing plus uh, the ability to just reduce damage in certain terrain also further reduces it and you do have terrain that specifically is also anti-stability so i'm not a big fan of stability damage it is a niche ability to enable but it is never a valid strategy permanently number three resource generation is fairly good if you are running 50 moral just like i'm doing here and you do have a lance with communication plus 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 devices you are typically able to shoot twice if not even thrice in terms of precise shots per round that means any form of evasion blips based strategy is completely out of the window because even with six seven evasion blips you still hit 50 percent of the time with 10 gunnery and a precise shots so that one wouldn't work either and finally damage mitigation is highly highly relevant because you need to be able to withstand basically five enemy uh, lances and that for me is kind of the benchmark for a good lance so just putting that out of uh, the way so that you know how i've uh, generated it and now let's look at the max and why i've chosen them the core of the lance building was the atlas 2 the Atlas II is an exception to the uh, already strong Assault mechs. Number one, Assault mechs are in the base game by far the strongest mechs, simply because you, at a certain level, can no longer just base your defense strategy on evasion blips. Some mods have modified that and basically made smaller mechs more vi viable. But the advantage of going first by no means offsets the huge, huge amount of stability advantage and structural advantage that these mechs are having. Now, what makes the Atlas II so exceptional? If you are taking a look at the overall list of mechs, let me just give you an example here. So this is my reference list of all of uh, the mechs that I am usually taking into consideration when building those lances, you would see that around all of the assault mechs, typically the higher you get into the tonnage range, the more defense you would get. So number one for selecting the Atlas was the vast amount of structural points. So really the Annihilator, the King Crab, the Atlas, and to a degree, the lower sections, maybe arguably because the Highlander as a Star League mech uh, could also come into consideration anything below this here would make the cut anything above it is too light and would not even be considered now the atlas 2 or atlas dht has a massive advantage if you look at this area here tonnage space that is freed up you would immediately see that there are a few exceptions the atlas the annihilator the bull shark as an uh, as a new mech of the expansion and then essentially the highlander and maybe the king crab so those are the contenders for 65 and above tons to even be considered into coming into the tier zero or s tier uh, mech list now when i walked then through the further content you would see the overall amount of hard points for the Atlas is for the Atlas 2 is 14, just like the one for the King Crab, which makes it just as uh, potent in many cases. The Annihilator is at 12, and then you're already seeing that only the uh, the Bullshock M3 would have a potential high value in there as well. The Highlander, even in the um, Star League version already falls off with the amount of hard points that are available. Specific focus for me is always energy hard points, support hard points, and missile hard points, less so the ballistic hard points because those three weapon categories tend to yield more damage and therefore are, more, uh, are better. 
So if you look at the atlas here, 10 in uh, that category. If you look at the king crab, we're looking at eight. We're looking at seven uh, for the annihilator, and we're only looking at four for the bull shark, which is it has other advantages such as the thumper. But we're now talking about the absolute best lance and not a nice lance, so the thumper would not make the cut for it. Which means it really boiled down to a few makes down here, including the Highlander. And now the question here is how much. Um, additional bonus can a mech bring to the table. Not only does the Atlas stand head and shoulders above almost all of the other mechs by having nearly 10 tons more than the King Crab, uh, which was his one uh, contender at the 100 uh, at the hundred ton mark. Not only has it still a bit more than the Annihilator, which is, mind you, a mech that has zero missiles and is only almost exclusively focusing on ballistic weapons and has a specific ballistic compensator in there. So the Atlas in itself has the highest tonnage available and the best hard points. That's the net net of it. But there is another fantastic option for the Atlas too, which is the ability that it is a Star League, a pre-Star League mech. So it per definition sinks 60 instead of 30 heat, meaning it is double or twice as efficient in its heat um, re uh, uh, reduction. So that in itself, just compare it, would be the equivalent of 10 tons worth of heat sinks just built into the mech. So that essentially goes up to 88 if you take a like for like comparison. And that's really it. It is by far the strongest mech the way that it is designed. Hence, it comes at no surprise why it makes the cut. And if you would be able to afford that, the King Crab is a good alternative. And there is a reason why I'm taking an Annihilator as well. So let's dive into the builds itself and what the core idea behind it is. All right, back in the game. We do have three Atlas two mechs and all of them uh, do have a little bit of a different task. One is an ECM carrier, the other two are DPS mechs, and then we do have a long-ranged sniper for larger ranged engagements. And let's just take a look at the stats here. Even the support mech has 770, uh, 780 points of damage. Mind you, that is multiplied by 1.2 because it is running a tech system. So in reality, we're looking closer to a thousand points of damage. The actual DPS mechs are coming in at over 1000 damage. That multiplied by 1.2, we're looking at around 1250 points of damage straight up. And we're having the Annihilator, which is a specific mech in this case. This year would be multiplied by 1.4, 1.2 due to its uh, own integrated uh, system um, that uh, gives a multiplication for both ballistic and energy weapons and 1.2 due to it running the techs as well. So overall, this is effectively 780 damage in the Annihilator uh, as well. And the Annihilator has a bit of a different task in it. Let's jump into the first mech, or let me maybe explain the idea of uh, the uh, lance, and then we're jumping into the details, so you can also fast forward if you don't want to see the details. Essentially, the way that that uh, lance here works is, you do have an ECM carrying mech, the ECM carrier, that will allow you to always stick with your entire lance. And as long as there is not a sensor lock and a continuation of missiles, you will not even take damage. If there is a sensor lock, you do have plenty of counterplay uh, with being able to stick in the forest, being sure-footed, uh, being um, bulwarked or being even braced. So you do have typically 60% damage reduction on all of uh, these bad boys, plus a few evasion blips, usually two to three. So after sensor lock, you still have sometimes an evasion blip left over. All of them run an armor of nigh uh, 2000. So you would uh, see if you multiply that by the way that missiles would work, 
uh, an LRM 20 would deal at best 20 points of damage. So the enemy is running out of missiles before even breaching the armor. It is not possible to defeat it that way. With the ECM, you would uh, stand as a group. Um, you would be able to push as a unit and you would always be able to go last behind the enemy and at worst what happens is that the enemy will start trading shots one at one with you but since you do have vigilance and since you do have a few measures to deal uh, with the enemy that wouldn't be a problem now here comes the kicker of uh, the uh, lance itself the lance deals so much damage that it is absolutely irrelevant what i'm targeting i can usually go for the core with a advanced shot and an advanced uh, uh, called shot onto the core that is an 80 percent chance to hit the core and with a thousand and two hundred fifty points of damage even if you do have 300 armor here and 300 structure and even if you are standing in a braced position with 40 percent damage reduction it will still completely overload it. So I've played this lance often and in two out of three cases, even with really bad aim uh, probabilities from time to time and poor luck, in two out of three cases, you will core any mech. And mind you, these here are already the 100 ton monsters. If you're looking at a standard mech in its uh, center torso, you're typically looking at 190, so 380 effective damage. And we're running 1,250 damage. So just to put that into consideration, you completely obliterate them. In terms of heat efficiency, just take that into consideration. I am running typically around a negative delta of 30 on each of them and have sufficient tools to deal with it so he even in the worst environments is not a problem on top of that we do have the annihilator and that's kind of the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle where the annihilator um, has loaded a lot of uacs with a very specific plus damage minus ton tag which makes the uac 2 plus plus with plus damage minus tons mathematically highly highly effective and will allow you to engage in the even longest distance. The Annihilator, and we can go into the details, is built in a way that you need two shots in order to destroy the head of any single enemy that you're seeing with the ER lasers. That guy has loaded five of them. And with the UAC uh, twos, that guy has loaded essentially five of them as well. So 10 ballistic shots, five energy shots, you will see 15 shots that could go onto a head and just statistically it is a better outcome than even the marauder with the targeting system so single pouring on the head is possible but with 780 damage i'm often not even bothering with that i'm still i'm simply targeting the core and would just rush through it so enemies that try to stick a bit at the back line will easily easily be called out by the annihilator the annihilator is also running targeting systems and i'll talk about that in a second just to offset the amount of recoil that you would get with all of the uacs but that comes with the details so i'll dive into each of the builds really quick and then we're going to see finally some footage uh, for this lance and here we are within the atlas ecm build the way that I've built the Atlas ECM, of course, is with the ComSystem Triple Plus. You will see them in every single Mac. You will see double heat sinks. I have tried to be efficient and will add about 30 in double heat sinks, effectively five of uh, them here. We got two exchangers plus plus and a single exchanger. Keep in mind those are linearly scaling, so I could use any combination as long as it is minus 50% weapon um, weapon heat. The core of it is the ECM field generator, which is in a pretty well protected spot here. You can see it has maximum or nigh maximum armor, 
just to find that sweet spot. I've used ERS++ lasers with the plus damage tech. The mo by far most effective weapon in the entire game, 0 0.5 tonnage uh, for 40 damage and a very moderate heat. The engagement distance of 150 meters isn't too bad. So with the speed of the Atlas, which is on top of it being just awesome, also a fast mech, you can get relatively quick towards the enemy and use those ERS lasers. I have used ERM lasers plus plus with the plus 10 damage tech. Those are the best medium lasers in the entire game, better than the triple pluses, because the triple pluses never have the plus 10 damage bonus. So essentially those I've put in and um, experimented a bit with the pulse lasers over the ERM lasers. I ended to, I happened to end up with a bit more tonnage available and those are typically generating more damage reliably for a better damage to heat uh, value. The only disadvantage is a slightly higher tonnage, but as you can see, we've already used all of the spots and with 30 heat differential, there's really not a lot of reason to even use more. We have stacked four um, AC-20 ammunition, so we're looking at 20 ammunition. That means 10 full shots with the AC, uh, UAC-20++, an absolutely critical weapon because it will hit for 120 points of damage at a single location, insta-killing on the head if needed, and also quite often opening uh, specific slots if you're not uh, target firing. It is an horrendously strong weapon and it's the one with the plus damage minus tons tech so the plus plus version of it is the most efficient one it's running attack really for additional marking for energy and ballistic and then just to round it out uh, we do have a bit of srm plus 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 here the only small offense so to speak because it wasn't uh, being uh, produced otherwise is having a bit of ammunition in the left arm not the end of the world, it's usually not a problem, but this theoretically could explode. But before that happens, you need to go through 200 armor and typically you're dead at this point. It was a trade-off between using 100 rounds and essentially having eight shots or having 200 rounds and therefore having the SRMs for a longer period. These guys here are with plus four damage and plus two stability damage. So fantastic weapons all around. This mech in itself is a support mech, keep that in mind. And we're almost crushing a thousand damage just with that and the techs included. Which nicely brings us to the heart of the entire lance, which is the Atlas that acts as a DPS. So it's the Atlas II here. And the change towards the support ECM Atlas that you've seen is essentially we're running two UAC 20 cannons. We have um, a bit of a different heat efficiency here. You're seeing a quite a substantial heat di discrepancy, but in reality, since the UAC 20s often need to rest for a bit, you can still run two or three rounds of that consecutively before even getting into trouble thanks to the heat bank plus plus that we do have included and with coolant if you wanted to run it that way you could even extend it with another round if you ever find yourself in a hot biome the atlas really tries to maximize its damage so 1250 the way that it uh, does that is we do have two uac 20 plus pluses with the plus 20 damage minus three tons we have filled all of the support slots with ers plus plus lasers very similar we do have only erm lasers not the pulse lasers because we want it to be efficient in terms of the utilization of uh, remaining tonnage and the uac 20s themselves with 12 tonnage come in at quite a heavy price well, we do have srm 6s plus 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 uh, with the damage and stability tech same ammunition but a little bit less srm ammunition instead we put in a tts plus plus system for the ballistics that covers the re uh, for the weaker recoil three accuracy almost offsets the minus five accuracy penalty that you're usually getting with the uac 20s if you do have that penalty, precise shot, and this accuracy benefit, 
you continue or you are typically able to just continue hammering away. There's also an option to simply just use one and then alternate between both of them if it really um, is a heat problem. Other than that, this build is really straightforward as it absolutely maximizes the damage. Like I said, you can go two to three rounds and you will see that this here is just going to melt the enemy. Which brings us to the last piece of the lance, the Annihilator for long-ranged engagements. I've thought long and hard about whether or not you want to have yet another DPS and since I playtested this lance extensively, this one here was really the missing piece that once I included it, it just clicked outright. With two DPS Central Atlas II max, you typically don't run into this situation where you need much more firepower just to overwhelm enemies. But I found myself more often in a situation where even with the ER lasers, we, the AC-20s were not quite in range. So it was not easy to always core the enemies right away. And the Annihilator is what closed that gap. The Annihilator has a nice option with its built-in BSC system that essentially increases the ballistic damage by 20% and also gives the Annihilator just a shit ton of extra stability. And the way that the entire uh, Annihilator here is built is for maximum damage on a higher range. You would see that we have just used two ERM lasers and instead used two ERL lasers, in this case with plus damage minus tonnage. The reason for that is the higher range. We are getting all the way up to 600 meters, which is far beyond vision range. So these ER lasers are equivalently long to normal AC-2s or Gauss cannons that you would see. With the tag weapon on top of it and the BCM system, you're really looking at a plus 40% damage uplift on anything that you see, which is why the damage here is not 550, but 780. The further idea is that with the USC 2 plus pluses, plus 10 damage minus 2 tons, you're getting in an ex into an extremely efficient area where, number one, the AC-2s don't need a lot of ammunition. You get 25 per container of ammunition so this here is 100 uh, points of ammo more than enough to withstand a long mission where you continuously need to fire so we're never running out of ammo one secondly the extra damage and the lack of tons really gets you into 70 damage for five tons which for a ballistic weapon is fantastic add on top of that the multiplier of 1.4 and you're no longer at 70 but 110 points of damage for five tons which is a really really strong proposition if you look into ballistic weapons in general they also deal very moderate heat so the heat management wasn't that difficult with it we're running a 30 heat differential so this mech here will also shine in he heavily heated biomes and even in shorter distance with the addition of the ERM lasers, there is still an option to deal with it. I've run out of really solid options, so that is why I added a few arm mods, just in case we're ever going into melee. Uh, that extra melee damage would make that even more devastating for the enemy. There is theoretically the option to, uh, to upload uh, some more support weapons but it kind of goes against the character of what the mech is trying to do i could get rid of uh, the arm mods and exchange an erm uh, an ERL laser for an erm laser and then uh, take out the uh, or reshuffle the heat sinks and basically put in two of the support weapons and i did that and when i was testing uh, the build nonetheless there were simply not enough situations where I would need that extra 80 points of damage of the two um, support weapons or if you put pulses in there maybe even a little bit more. The mech already kills what it needs to kill and it does it on a super high distance in a super reliable fashion and that's really why it got the last spot. And now enough of the waffling we have gone through all of that and instead we're now looking for some gameplay. 
All right, back at it. Let's uh, see how our strongest lance in Battletech will deal with another five school mission. This time we engage, early engage Zeus. There is more on the battlefield. Just Standing taking by. a look at that mid-ranged engagement that you can get out of the Annihilator. Just to showcase 40% damage reduction, we're looking at two blips of evasion. No problem at all. Firing Still full-fledged full engagement. And that's a core 100 to 0 40 percent damage reduction did not save him at all all right different engagement this time we're in the open field same mission we already one shot uh, their initial sensor locker now i found out the orion can sensor lock as well and in order to protect uh, the the max here even on the open it is quite important to deal with sensor lock issues right away i'll show you how a support mech like uh, the atlas here can even be of help we're going to take some retaliation fire on the annihilator because uh, the he had been sensor locked and normally if i was to play it completely safe i would stay in the woods but just see how much armor we're talking about now in order to just deal with those situations you would proactively move up and the only enemy that could hit us at this point is the zeus straight up coring it there you go no counter fire well, let's take a look how the rest of this turn would play out of course we're not particularly happy about being sensor locked in the first place so how about moving up way. to this Orion here, right? Straight up, coring. Uh -huh. Wasn't even standing a chance. And how about hey, doing the exact it. same with the other Atlas over here? Precision strike, poor target. target. Done. That's it. An entire lance eradicated. And... We even uh, didn't even break a sweat. Destroyed. All right, another engagement, five school mission. This time in the middle of uh, the woods, we have uh, advanced to this position over here. You can see uh, we're fighting against more than one lance. Got a couple of heavy vehicles and uh, all heavy, no, actually even all assault mechs in this case. They're running a typical Cyclops. Uh, kind of set up in order to just beat us with initiative and they all unloaded on a single atlas and i just want to highlight how that ended up essentially they took a little bit less than 150 damage uh, which gets to show you how sturdy the mechs are in general so moving up with the atlas and let's do the same things as before we do have a banshee available Straight up pouring it in the first hit. Done. Not even a counterplay. Mech destroyed. Using the second Atlas over here. Precision strike. Straight up pouring. Done. That's half of the lance gone and we have we haven't even really started. Using our long-term or long-ranged engager with the Annihilator, highly effective. Don't even need to Let's see how you like this. Uh, need to target at this one. Super heavy PPC carrier, Instagon. Vehicle down, ready for orders. And we're sprinting all the way over to here. Done. Let's see how how the rest of this fight goes. Good. We're left with a single mild engagement via this Zeus here. And again, let's just take a look at how things will play out. Shrek PPC carrier. Don't even need to aim for that guy. Simply destroyed. Which leaves a One more for the trash heap. another assault mech over there. And just for the sake, let me show you how even the support uh, mech, in this case, uh, the Atlas that carries the 
uh, e ECM can deal damage. So this is pure support mech, mind you. This is not the main mech that should deal damage. Nonetheless, you could core it. So I have had multiple situations where an all assault lance, four out of four, was just completely cored in a single round, 100 to zero, every single one of them. Mission successful. Got another engagement here. We have been sensor locked as we're approaching the space. As you can see, minimal damage that we have taken. So now it's time to retaliate. I just wanted to give you some thoughts about this. So this is the sensor locking entity. Locked on. Full on coring for no more sensor locking in the future. And a couple of ongoing shots for the turret. Just to show that as well, even in a hot biome like this, we're not even taking any heat, which is another good sign of this lance. It can withstand any attack, even in the higher biomes, and continue to work. Okay, as we're moving in, this time the Annihilator was uh, the target. Again, same, uh, same deal. We're starting with the Thunderbolt over here. Full-fledged coring, 100 to 1. Or to zero rather. Moving up uh, with the next one, the DPS Atlas. Uh, this time we got a, an awesome right here, precision shot for special delivery. And special delivery for a direct kill, 100 to zero. All right, next up we got a catapult uh, over here again. Pretty much center torso and it's going from 100 to zero no chance so that was three for three last round we had another one and the turret in simply one round we've eliminated an entire lance hey okay, funny enough we got company same mission second uh, pair of reinforcements is coming in we're going to reserve and let them come in and run into us Good. This time, since we're standing in the open, we'll just use Vigilance for once and then a Precision Shot to round up the experience. Got a Victor standing there. And even in mid-range or long-range, 100 to 0, GG. Another Victor came out of the woodwork. So we're just moving up. Our DPS Atlas targets it, and before the lasers start to shoot, the guy's already down. So that was the re wave of reinforcements, half of a lance, but yeah, we had plenty of actions left over, as you can see. Didn't even need to use most of our actions here. Still the same mission, the second half of uh, the reinforcements just showed up, and I wanted to show you... It follows the same uh, scheme. Even our support mech, the ECM uh, wielding Atlas II, can be a quite deadly instrument. Use this here as an example, where the catapult came up and it just got cored from the support mech. Finally, another good example, this time a grasshopper. Commander. One of uh, the more dangerous Confirmed. large mechs or heavy mechs. Even in mid-range with all of the evasion blips and racing it's still a hundred to zero so hope that illustrated just how strong the lance is hundred to zero in almost all of uh, the cases and typically the victory screen even after two three four lances of enemies includes nice zero damage that you have taken plus a lot of loot so in this case we've fought against 12 entities and we've taken barely any damage like 300 on the annihilator and 150 on the atlas not even close no wounds nothing straight up uh, killed all of the enemies you can see them down here all right that's it for the best possible lance in the entire game hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to leave a comment and a like down below and see you in the next video Bye bye